Hey, Frank, so the, it gets into one of those half-court possession-by-possession games that you guys have certainly been in a lot of those with LeBron and AD. What, what is most important in those situations? Well, we have to make sure we work for shot quality and, and not settle, uh, which I thought we did a, a little too much tonight. Um, you know, but uh, we got to the paint enough uh, when we needed to and, and, and made enough big shots. Uh, I think Kuz's tip-in was a was really big play, uh, following up a shot again, uh, an effort play. Um, and then defensively, uh, you know, you got you to guard them without going to the free throw line. And aside from a couple of and ones that they got, you know, I thought we did a, a decent enough job making things difficult for them without putting to to the line. When you have LeBron and AD as the base, how different is it when you can't go to KCP or Caruso, and in this case it's you know Shooter and Matthews? How how much different is, does that make things for you, and do you have to coach any differently with the different players on the floor? Yeah, well, everybody has different skill sets. It brings different things to the table. But I thought, uh, you know, I thought those guys really competed defensively. Uh, Dennis and Wes, in particular, um, you know, especially uh, you know that, that one possession that Dennis had, I think, on on DeRozan. Um, just playing one on one and competing, you know those guys are uh, good two way players. You know Dennis hit a, a big three in the in the fourth there. Um, you know West didn't score, but really impacted the game with his energy and our, and our defense. Uh, you know we were obviously we're, we're struggling to find the proper energy uh, to win a basketball game tonight. And you know I thought guys like West and Kuz, Talon coming in and filling in for KCP when he went down, uh, you know really gave us a, a lift from an energy standpoint. Dave? Frank, when you guys were able to break, the, break things open with that late run, do you think that was just wearing them down or, or finding the right opportunities? What do you think led to um, you know, the run you guys went on late? Yeah, we just stayed with it. You know, I think we just, uh, you know, persisted through, uh, through our struggles. And, you know, that's going to happen from time to time, you know, if you, throughout a, a long regular season, 72 game. Uh, regular season, um, you know, you're going to have some wins that are a little uglier than others. And, uh, you know, we knew coming in uh, to this season with uh, the nature of the off season and whatnot that there was going to be some ugly nights. And, you know, the, the key is can you find a way to win, you know, when you're not at your best? And, uh, you know, we were able to do that tonight. So, you know, proud of that, that type of, uh, you know, uh, effort or perseverance uh, through a tough night down the stretch to make enough plays to get the W. Bill? Fred, in Casey has been kind of an iron man for you guys um, really the last several years. Um, when he into something like this, you know, he said that he felt like he was hopefully be able to play on Sunday. Um, how much do you take into consideration the, the circumstances of this season when determining whether or not you want a player playing through, you know, an injury that, you know, is, is, is relatively mild? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we, we didn't have a normal off season or normal preseason, so you know I think uh, we factor those things into the decision. But ultimately, something like that just comes down to the medical team. You know, more than anything, uh, us as coaches are, are going to make a decision on if, if they say he's good to go. You know, he'll be in there, and if, if they feel like he should, uh, you know, sit out another game or, or two or whatever whatever it takes, uh, we'll follow their lead. Kyle. Uh, Frank, you talk about sort of the energy, and, and obviously you expected, you know, for the, you know, it'd be tough to kind of come with the same energy as guys are getting back in shape. But, you know, in, in one sense, you know, you guys kind of pull through and win. I know coaches like to learn from wins rather than losses, but is it hard to kind of wake guys up to the urgency that a certain amount of energy is needed each night, um, just getting the way that you win a game like this? Yeah, I mean, urgency is required to win any any night in the NBA, and um, you know, like I said, we didn't uh, we didn't have the, the necessary urgency uh, through stretches of the game, but you know, well, like we, like I said, we stayed with it. You know, we, we, we kept kept trying to you know put ourselves in position to win, and ultimately we're able to grind it out. So um, you know, I'm proud of them for being able to do that. I will say. You know, it's a, it's a difficult mental challenge, you know, doing the baseball schedule type of thing that the teams are doing throughout the league, you know, where you uh, you play a team and, and you know, you, especially if you win that first one, you stay in the city. You know, we've been here four days and then you know, come back and play that same team, especially, you know, like the Spurs are on demand. Uh, there's a mental challenge to, to, to that uh, that I think teams are going to see throughout the year. I think you see a lot of splits in these situations and, uh, you know, we're, we're susceptible to that tonight. 
But like I said, we're able to persevere and, and, and get the W. Last two questions, Dan. Hey, Frank, good to see you. Um, the uh, two questions, does does Dennis need an MRI, or I'm sorry, not Dennis, uh, KCP is the plan for him to get an MRI or anything in Memphis, or is it not that serious? They did not mention that to me. I don't, I don't think, I think it's just a, a mild ankle sprain. Uh, I do not know if they're going to get an MRI or not. Uh, secondly, um, guys have talked about AD getting three-point attempts up. Um, six tonight. Um, what did you like about the confidence and kind of the quality of those shots? Yeah, well, we want him to shoot him, and um, you know, he's look, he's shooting the ball extremely well from all over the floor for us this year. So, uh, you know, if we're going to play uh, most of our minutes, which we are right now with him at the four, um, you know, it's important to be a to be a floor spacer and carry that threat, you know, in, in that type of role. And, you know, it's just a. Uh, Player, player development applies to, to all players on, on the team, not just the young players. Uh, we want guys to, uh, to grow their games. And, uh, you know, he took a big step, I thought, uh, from uh, two years ago into last year with his three-point shooting. And, you know, we're asking him to take another big step uh, with, with regard to this year. So, uh, you know, without those four threes, you know, uh, maybe we don't win tonight. You know, so uh, kudos to him for uh, continuing to grow. Uh, last question, Andy Kamineski. Hey, Frank. Um, defensively, given that you guys have some new pieces, particularly fours and fives, who are different than Dwight and JaVale, the coaching staff, how far along are you guys in knowing exactly what you want to be doing schematically, how you want to use guys, stuff like that? Well, we, have a good, we have a good idea of how we want to use guys, but we're, we're, still, you know, we're still learning what, what guys can do you know, and, and how to put them in. Uh, the best position to be successful, and um, you know that that process plays out for you know the, the, the better part of probably the first half of the season, and um, you know and we'll continue to be evaluated. But you know it takes time, you know, and uh, you know for for them to learn what we're asking them, them to do, and for us to to understand what um, you know what ways to put them in the best position to succeed. So it's good. it'll be an ongoing process.